How can our love, obedience, and fear of God influence future generations? In today's society, Moses teaches the wilderness generation that God still expects their commitment to follow his commands when they go into the promised land. In Moses' farewell address, he reflected on God's redemption from slavery in Egypt, as well as God's punishment for their disobedience while in the wilderness. Because of what God had done, they were urged to trust, love, and obey God. In Deuteronomy 6, Moses offered an explanation of the first commandment, which should be the foundation for all we do and believe. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. The law was to be perpetuated throughout the history of Israel. The reward for keeping the law was that the Israelites, their children, their future generations, would live long. To live long refers not necessarily to an individual long life, which probably was included, but rather to the long life of Israel as a people. That is, the Israelites would possess the land for a long time. Conversely, if they failed to fear the Lord and keep his commandments, they would lose the land. Therefore, as each generation remembered to obey the commandments, they would enjoy the benefits of the land, and their days would be prolonged. The law was intended for their well-being, so that Israel could enjoy life to the fullest. Moses implicitly declared the uniqueness of the God of Israel, namely that the Lord is the one God, and he is not a, in a pantheon of many gods that are worshipped by the surrounding peoples. Rather than ruling over one sphere or having one power as other gods did, Israel's God was God alone over everything, uniting all power. The phrase in verse 4 could also be translated, The Lord is our God, the Lord alone. This translation would emphasize that the Israelites were to worship no gods in addition to the Lord. Moses invited the people to give the Lord their complete allegiance by loving him with the totality of their being with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. The Lord was to be Israel's sole object of worship and affection, not other gods. Scripture often links the command to love with the command to obey. Obeying is the natural outworking of loving. True love, worship, and holy principles come from within the heart, as do the evil issues of life. The heart is also the seat of the consciousness or memory. Therefore, to store the commandment in our heart is to keep it in our consciousness as long as we live. In other words, God's commandments should become a part of our being, and we are to be conscious of them all the days of our lives. To make the law a visible and permanent part of their life, the Israelites were to bind them upon their hands as a constant reminder of their allegiance to the Lord, and the law, and posted on their forehead, and on the lintels of their houses. Binding them on their hands is probably a figurative expression of how diligent their allegiance to the law should be. The significance of these instructions is well understood, and that is to keep them conscious of God by a visible and constant reminder of the law. So here's our lesson. Our love for God must involve our whole heart, soul, and mind. This also includes loving our neighbors. We have to teach and show for our children and future generations what love encompasses. There is a rise in hate crimes across the United States and the world. If hate is, to, is taught to children, they may grow up to hate. But if we teach love of God and others, they more than likely will grow up loving all. This is the love of God personified. We have to love and worship God with our whole beings. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.